Welcome back to Square Repair. My name is Giovanni Dante Griego, and today I'm gonna to show you guys how to build and install an affordable, reliable fuel system for your LS Swap Square Body. Let's go. The Square Body Chevy, the iconic, hardworking truck from the 70s and 80s. These trucks were built to endure the toughest jobs America had to throw at them. This is the show where we take these beasts that were once the heartbeat of America and bring new life into them to last for decades to come. My name is Giovanni Dante Griego and this is Square Repair. All right, so I just finished cleaning up this tank for our Suburban here. Basically, we just kind of degreased it and we're gonna paint it with some cheap Rust-Oleum paint just to protect it from rust. We got pretty lucky being that our Suburban here is a 1987 Chevy Suburban, meaning that the original equipment actually had a fuel injection tank. I'll show you guys what this tank looks like on the inside. It has a plastic kind of baffling system or a sump. And basically why you would want that in a fuel injection setup is because when you accelerate, all that fuel is gonna slosh to the back of the tank or when you're braking, all that fuel is gonna slosh to the front of the tank. And uh, if you're running on like a quarter tank or less, your fuel pump might suck up some air on during that transition period. Chevy in uh, 87 when they switched over EFI, they basically just grabbed a tank, modified it, installed those sump systems in them, and they seem to hold up pretty well for fuel injection purposes. Now, I like to think sometimes that the OEMs were kind of just like us, kind of throwing parts together to make everything work. And that usually seems to be the case when we're talking about late 80s vehicles, especially when it comes to GM. In 87, late 80s, they were making that transition to fuel injecting their vehicles. A lot of the square body trucks died in 1987, and then they brought on the uh, C1500 style, OBS is what we call them now trucks. And um, all those trucks were slated to be fuel injected. They were all getting re-engineered, redesigned, so they could make new tanks for them, new equipment, all that stuff for them. But the Suburban is a little bit special because that truck ended up staying around until 1991. There was no use in redesigning or re-engineering an entire tank and fueling system for these vehicles. So GM did what most of us would do and they kind of just slapped some things together. Now we have these OEM parts that are available for LS swapping our vehicles. My particular build is a little bit different because it has the original 87 fuel injection tank, but along the way, someone kind of took that apart and rigged this thing up. I think this is a either pre-87 filler or someone actually cut off the uh, fuel pump hanger off of it. So we have this kind of weird arrangement here. So what I did is I went and grabbed a new 1987 fuel pump sending unit. Now the original fuel pump on this only had to pump out a certain amount, which is not enough for our LS swap. So what we've done here is we've gone ahead and purchased a fuel pump for a 1997 Chevy 3500 with a 454. This thing should supply us ample fuel for our LS swap. If you guys are looking to put power to your vehicle right away, you guys will want to look at the Walboro GSS 340. That thing pumps out, I think, 255 liters per hour. It should hold you up to right around 500 horsepower, naturally aspirated. Now, we're not planning on making 500 horsepower or even getting close to that, so this old 97 fuel pump should do the trick. Now, all of this is all pretty standard. We're just gonna mount our fuel pump into the sending unit, put our fuel sock on, connect our hose to our piping, and drop this puppy in. After we get this puppy in, we're gonna make a couple modifications to this to make it work a little bit better for us. Now again, I just went to my local AutoZone or O'Reilly's and picked all these parts up. These parts are usually readily available, and if not, it's usually just a day or two shipping to get them here. Now here's something a little bit different I wanted to try for this build. I went on Amazon and uh, typically on most of my swaps, I would just slide some, uh, I would just clamp them on really tight with some fuel injection clamps. But I saw these on Amazon and wanted to give them a shot. These are compression fittings that convert a tube to AN6. Now they come in different sizes. These ones that I have are 5 16s and I've also ordered some 3 8 ones. But in the meantime, we're gonna use our old sending unit here to test out to see if that if these will actually work without leaking. Now, the way that these function is basically you have your little ferrule, you have your base piece. We're gonna slip that base piece on, and then we're gonna slip this ferrule on and sandwich the two together, and you have a AN6 fitting. Now for us, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually cut these ends off so that way our ferrule can just slip over the bare tube without this flared end. So we're definitely gonna be using our old one as a base. 
If it works on the old one, it's gonna transfer right over to the new one. Now using this tool, I'm gonna to make some sparks. So I'm gonna get our big giant tank away. Even though it's a diesel tank, I'm still gonna just move it out of the way just as a precaution. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and nip these off and test out if they fit. Got some 80 grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna clean off these ends here. Ream out the hole with a drill bit. Obviously this one we don't care about making look super good. We're just testing to see if the actual adapter is gonna work. So now that we got that off, we're gonna slip our piece on there slide on our ferrule or our olive and then we're gonna put the two together now i'm assuming once you tighten these two down it's going to compress on that flare and work out pretty good so now that we see that everything does fit before we go ahead and tighten down on this one we're going to go ahead and cut off the ends of our new fuel sending unit and put those adapters on here. All right, and through the magic of television, we got our adapter fitting on there. And now what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to hook our AN line straight up to the sending unit. And we won't have to mess with any clamps or rubber hose in between. Now I'm gonna do this for the 3 a side as well. This little skinny guy, we can add one there if we wanted to, if we wanted to make everything look super nice, but this is just a vent tube. This is just gonna get routed up and around to the frame. This one shouldn't see any actual fuel, just fuel vapor. So we don't really need anything fancy on here, but this one is our return and the 3 ace one is our feed. So I'm gonna finish all that and then drop this into our tank. Once that's all done, we'll get everything back in the truck and I'll show you guys how we're gonna do the rest. What's up? It's me, Giovanni, your host of Square Repair. I need you guys to do me one big favor. Because I haven't been uploading to YouTube as frequently as I should have. Basically, my YouTube videos aren't having the reach like they used to. So if you guys could do me one huge favor, please click that subscribe button if you guys haven't yet. Um, and then go ahead and hit that like button for me. That's going to help boost my video up, um, allow other people to see it. And for those of you that are really into this uh, series or into my channel, go ahead and share this video. Share it to Facebook, share it to Instagram, whatever you guys want to do, just share the video. That will really help me get this video to uh, reach the people that I wanted to reach. You know, people that love square bodies, just like you. So thanks for doing that for me. All right, now back to the video where uh, past me gets to crawl around underneath the Suburban for quite a few days. All right, everyone. So the first task in this, so we have our fuel system, right? This is our fuel filter. This is a fuel pressure regulator and fuel filter. This is a uh, commonly known as like the Corvette style regulator. And we have our inlets coming from our fuel tank this one is our inlet this one is our return sorry the middle one is the return this one is the inlet those need to be flipped you can also see with here we have this three ace aluminum tubing three ace is the same size as a and six and we went with aluminum because it doesn't rust and it's very very easy to manipulate with your hands as you can see we can kind of just bend it where we need it to go right how do we adapt our tubing to our fuel pressure regulator well there's a couple different ways we could use a hard line to AN adapter like we used on our fuel tank. That's a pretty simple way, but then we would have two male ends and then we would probably run another AN line between these two. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna flare this line and add a AN nut to it. So this is a AN6 nut, tubing nut. And as you can see, it comes with these little tubing sleeves. So basically what you do is we're gonna put our, everything on there like this. So you put the, the nut on first, tube sleeve, and then we're going to flare this and and what's going to happen is we're going to have this nice little an line these are a lot cheaper than a lot of like adapters for example you can get a tube in a sleeve for about a dollar fifty two dollars maybe whereas the uh, adapters themselves are usually about six or eight dollars i got a 10 pack of these for about twenty dollars and um a four pack of these is about mm, twenty eight dollars so but we do need those. We do need some special tools. This is looks like a brake line flaring tool. Uh, you know, your old double bubble flare. 
it's not. This is actually an AN flaring tool. So it will give this tubing a 37 degree flare. It's a single flare, which means we only have to do it once. With your brake line flares, your double bubbles, you insert it, you match the die, squeeze it once, flip everything around, and then squeeze it again, and that gives you a double flare. All we have to do is ensure that we have our, our nut and our sleeve on there, right? Make sure we have a flat edge here, nice smooth surface, which we do because we used a tubing cutter. We're going to be using the three ace line. So basically we just open that up a touch, get this guy on there. Might have to loosen it up just a little bit. And for these ones, I'm pretty sure you want it to be pretty flat with the surface. And what we'll do is we'll grab something flat and use that as our guide. Grab something flat, like our wrench. And just make sure that, you know, that's all good. Snug that down. And then we're gonna tighten it up with the wrench. Now, aluminum tubing obviously is very soft. So it's not gonna take a lot of force to uh, flare this one. And we have to actually just be careful that we don't accidentally throw any unnecessary bends or anything in this thing. So that's nice and snug down. Also, you can pick up these flaring tools for right around $20, uh, which is not bad at all. And obviously you can use it for multiple things. I mean, it goes all the way up to half inch, which would be an AN10, I believe. So, I mean, why not use hardline if you're going to be doing this because this hardline tubing itself i got 20 feet for about 20 dollars we used about 10 feet of it to get up to the front 10 feet of an line is going especially ptfe line is going to be way more expensive you know aluminum is going to be just as resistant to uh, e85 and anything like that as well so it's a it's kind of a no-brainer on using a hardline I never used to use hardline. I always opted for just running one big long AN line up to the front, sometimes two lines like I have on my dually. And uh, that could get expensive pretty quickly. So definitely consider using hardline tubing in your projects. And as always, all the links to all this stuff will be in my description just so you can get an idea. But anyways, now we're gonna grab our actual flaring die. We're going to slip this on there. Gotta back it out quite a bit. There we go. We're gonna get that lined up, centered up into the tube, hand tighten it till it's snug. And then we're just going to tighten it down. Now obviously don't forget to put your aluminum nut on and your sleeve first. I've done that plenty of times where you flare a line and then you realize you didn't put your tube nut on. We're not gonna go crazy, we're just gonna Tighten it down, you know, check our progress a little bit. You should be using oil on this. If you're doing a steel line or whatever, you're definitely gonna wanna use oil, but um, this is aluminum, so it's not that bad. Now the hard part here is without bending your whole line, kinking it, you have to uh, kind of hold everything in place and loosen it up. There you go. Now when I take this off, we should have a nice solid 37 degree flare on this thing. And let's see, I don't know how well you guys can see, that's our flare. And so you can see how well that tubing sleeve slips, slips into that. Our nut has fallen way down here, so we'll slide that up, hold on. So then our nut comes and slides over that. And we have this beautiful little AN flare. And so that'll just go right there onto our, onto our fuel filter and then obviously we will kind of hand form this uh, fuel line to fit across the rail nice and smooth. I went ahead and removed all the old fuel lines so we have all these nice mounting holes and all the brackets that the original fuel line was on. We can you know tie it to the brake line do whatever we got to do to make it stable and then just run it up to the front of the truck. It is really that simple guys. Definitely consider using hardline for your next project. Super cheap, super affordable and um definitely durable. This line will probably last the uh, life of the truck at this point. It's not going to corrode. It's not going to rust. The only thing you could do is accidentally break it. So let's take a quick second to go over how our fuel pressure regulator slash filter works. Now, because we have a returnless intake, we only have one line on the top of our intake, meaning that our intake is not internally regulated. So we need some kind of secondary regulator in order to regulate the fuel going to the intake. 
So now for years, this has been kind of the go-to for the returnless systems. This is what is known as a Corvette fuel filter regulator. It gets its name because this was a stock part on all the LS1 Corvettes. Now, what this regulator does is your fuel inlet, which is this black hose here, this one goes in on the underneath side. It'll be either the top or the bottom, offset from the center. That one goes there. Fuel gets regulated inside of here to, I believe, 58 PSI. Anything past 58 PSI gets pushed out of this center area. It's a 5 16th fitting. That goes to our return marked by this green zip tie here. Now, as you guys saw when we built the tank, we have an inlet and we have a return. So it's pretty simple and everything kind of matches up. On top of our tank, our feed is a 3 8 barb and our return is a 5 16th. Same scenario here. All the fuel gets regulated 58 PSI and it gets shot out of here and we have one straight shot up to the intake. Now, obviously that saves us a lot of tubing, a lot of plumbing because we don't have to have these two big long runs running up all the way to the engine of the truck. And our return is only maybe three, or two or three feet back to the tank. So this is definitely a really good, this is definitely a really good option when you're doing LS swaps. You can see everything looks pretty factory here. Pretty simple to take out. You can just pinch these fittings, slide these out and uh, you know, unbolt this and you're good to go. You can swap this thing out if it gets clogged. These things are pretty affordable now. Back in the day, the only way to get them was really through the OEM, but now uh, there's a ton of aftermarket options for these things. And like this one, a lot of them come already pre-fitted with AN fittings. And so that makes it an even more affordable option because now you're not worrying about buying the extra fittings and adapting things to AN. Alrighty, so we finished up our fuel line. Uh, as you can see, our line comes from down there, wraps over, it's secured multiple places, and then goes to this little tiny AN line. And that adapts to our three ace fuel line adapter fitting. Um, it's a quick disconnect adapter fitting. That link will also be in the description below so you can see what they look like. But basically that just converts this kind of GM proprietary fuel quick disconnect over to AN6. We have a little tiny, maybe two inch AN line that then adapts to our tubing. And that goes to our AN6 to 3 ace hard line adapter. And we have a nice clean setup now. All right, and that's pretty much it. That just about wraps everything up as far as the fuel systems related. A lot of people are really scared of this step. It's not complicated at all, really. This setup here with the three ace fuel line will get you right up to, you know, three, 400 horsepower NA. Um, if you're planning on going bigger, you might as well just start off bigger. So I would use dash eight or 10 fuel line, which is gonna step you up to about, you know, up to a half an inch of fuel line. It's still, all relatively the same price. It just gets a little bit pricier the bigger the line you go. But um, that system will support you well into the, uh, you know, six, seven, eight hundreds basically. And then obviously you would increase your fuel pump size as well. But like I said, that's about it for as far as the fuel system goes. There's a lot of stuff left to do on this vehicle, but we're getting pretty close to being able to fire this thing off. So um, definitely come back for episode three where we're gonna get this thing running, I hope. Again, my name is Giovanni Dante Grego. I am your host of Square Repair. I hope to see you guys again in the next episode. And uh, yeah, keep on trucking, everyone. Yeah.